Hello folks and welcome to another video. I guess this will be a bit of a a bit of a special edition, you might say. It's gonna be a tribute. A tribute to uh, a bloke that um, I think will be sorely missed from the sporting world. I speak of Shane Warne. The Sheik of Tweak, the Spin King, Warney as he was known to cricket lovers all over the world. Revered as a master of his craft, the craft being leg spin bowling. I see, um, I woke this morning, early this morning to the news that he's passed away over there in Thailand from a suspected heart attack. That's what we're hearing at the moment. There might be more comes out of it, comes out of the story in the coming days. But um, what we know is that he's gone and he follows about 24 hours or so earlier, the news came through that we lost another legendary Australian cricketer in Rodney Marsh. Well, Bacchus, as he was known. It's been a rough sort of day and a half for the uh, Australian cricket-loving public, the world cricket-loving public. Folks, why am I talking about this on a flight simulation channel? Well, because I can. <laughs> There's not much I can, uh, not much I can do. We all pay tribute to people in different ways, don't we? And I thought I'd um, I'd pay my tribute for what it's worth, and it's not worth much, to be perfectly honest. Um, I thought I'd pay tribute by going for a fly in an aeroplane that I love to fly, and in a place that uh, I think Warney would approve of as well. Folks, we're in the Boeing Stearman by DC Designs, and we're in a location called Great Lakes which is in uh, the Lakes Entrance region of Victoria, east of, uh, well east of Melbourne, on the coast there. This is a custom freeware airport. There will be a, um, a link to it in the description. I don't know what the flight's going to involve, folks. I'm just going to go for a fly. It's just going to be off-the-cuff, raw, sort of a bit of a reaction to, to the news. It, it's interesting. You know, you hear about, uh, you know, well-known people... Um, you know, kicking the bucket on a pretty regular basis. Um, and most of them, most of them I don't recognise, to be honest. And and the vast majority of them have uh, no impact uh, on me whatsoever. And occasionally, you, you're almost glad to hear that one's dropped off the perch. And then there's others that kind of hit you for different reasons. Just let me get this thing... Um, Start it up, folks. So I'm a little bit distracted. Um, yeah, and look, Warney's passing is is one of those that have kind of have kind of hit differently, if I can put it that way. Um, I didn't grow up with Warney uh, as a as a sort of figure. I, I was a bit. I'm a generation before that. Um, so my sort of era was 70s, 80s and, and Australian cricket went through a rough time In that period um, And then sort of Warney came along and, and other players Like McGrath, Ponting, the War Brothers Hayden, Langer, Gilchrist And there were some other bowlers in there as well And it kind of... I guess every generation has its um, has its golden age. I don't know. I think Australian cricket in the nineties and sort of into the noughties, because of all of those players, including Warren, I think uh, most most cricket fanatics will refer to that as a golden age of Australian cricket. And um, I remember being absolutely in awe of what those blokes were doing. I, like most Australian blokes, I, I grew up playing cricket and uh, developed a love for the game. Uh, by the time Warren came along, my playing days were, were kind of over. Um, but I was able to enjoy it as a spectator. And uh, what those guys did, that that era of players was, was incredible. And, and Warren was front and centre for all sorts of reasons. And not always for you know, positive stuff either, folks. 
you know, uh, people are kind of, you know, figures like him are often eulogised almost as saints when they pass away. Warney was no saint and that was part of his appeal. He was a genuine larrikin and he had his, he had his troubles, he had his, uh, his issues and look, people can argue about his uh, moral stature and all that sort of stuff. You know, but um, he was a character, he was a larrikin, he was genuine, he was authentic. You felt like he was authentic. I never had the pleasure of meeting him in person, but uh, I've certainly seen enough, enough of him on the telly over the years. You kind of got that feel, and everyone sort of coming out today and is, is paying, paying tribute is kind of saying the same thing. Folks, you're just going to have to forgive my poor pilotage here. I am... Uh, Flying is, is secondary to this video, to be perfectly frank. Um, we're going to go for a flight. It's a flight simulation channel. <laughs> if we don't go for a flight, we're going to be looking at a black screen and hearing this old bloke's voice. Possibly a voice that might be cracking by the end of it, folks. Um, runway 08 here at Great Lakes, for those of you uh, paying attention more than I am. Anyway, we'll just... Um, oh, let's, just let's just do this thing. Local Barry, let's move. And I'll keep rambling on as we as we go. Don't know where we're going to end up, folks. Don't know what I'm going to do. Just feels like it's a good time to go for a fly. What I'm reminded of, when you lose people in your life, and if you live long enough, you're going to lose a whole bunch of people in your life. And um, some of them hit harder than others, but in all in all cases. What losing someone should do for you is to um, make you reflect on your own life and whether you're living the life that you want to live. Um, Warney's life, I reckon we could say, was a life well lived. You can argue about, it's certainly his off-field antics, you can't argue on field that he was the greatest proponent of leg spin bowling we've ever seen. One of the, uh, the top cricketers of all time. He is a, a genuine legend. And you can argue about some of his yeah, indiscretions or field. Certainly would have been hard for his family. Um, but it felt to me as a, as a spectator, as a cricket lover, it felt like he was, his life was well lived, you know? He's gone, he's, he's the age of 52. He lived to 52 and that's, that's pretty young, isn't it? You know? But it was a life well lived and it's... What we should all do, people that are left behind, reflect on whether we're living our lives. Uh, whether we can be considered as living them well lived or not. And that means different things for, for different people, folks. For some people, a life well lived is firing up a flight simulator and going for a fly. For other people, it's um, kicking the foot in the park with your kids, others travelling the world, Shit, it might be bloody origami, that might be your bag. You know? You gotta enjoy you gotta enjoy what you're doing while you can because there's one thing there's a lot of uncertainty in life folks, there's a lot of uncertainty in the world right now. But there's one thing that's certain and that's death. The Reaper will visit you. You just don't know exactly exactly when that will be. Sorry for getting a little bit deep, folks. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. That's that's what this stuff does. It, it gives you gives you pause for reflection. It's, it really has hit hard. I woke up this morning and I, I just couldn't believe what I was reading on the screen. I, I, my first thought was, uh, you know, a what the? And it was just shaking my head involuntarily. I just this what's what? <laughs> so I had to check another source. And that was telling me the same thing. And I checked another source after that, and that was telling me the same thing. I'm thinking, oh shit, this is real. You know? This is real. And uh, since then, you sort of process it, and we all go through our... It is a grieving process. Obviously nothing compared to what his family's going through. But everyone who enjoyed... Everyone who was entertained by him... Boy, wasn't he an entertainer. A genuine entertainer. And we still have a few of those in, in modern sport. But boy, he stood out in the cricketing world. I saw, I read something today. 
I thought this person put it beautifully. He said, every delivery, every worn delivery was an event and every worn spell was a journey. You know, when he had the ball in his hand, when the bloody captain threw him the ball, war or ponting threw him the ball, you just felt like something was gonna happen because it often did. It often did. And uh, I recall he was, he was a, a master sort of, he read the game beautifully. All the greats do. They're kind of two steps ahead of everyone else. You know, they seem to have a lot of time. If you're a batsman, a great batsman, they seem to have all the time in the world. They see the ball like a bloody beach ball. And the great bowlers seem to be a few deliveries ahead. They seem to know what the batsman's going to do before they do it. Warren was like that. And I remember he played in the, the Big Bash here in Australia. He, he, was he playing for the Melbourne Stars? I think it was. I can't remember who the batsman was. But anyway, he was basically, he had the, he was mic'd up as he was bowling, you know. And the commentators are talking to him and say, you know, what do you got planned here, Warney? What are you, what are you going to do to this bloke? And he was reading the game, he was, and he was ahead. He knew what the, he knew what the batsman was going to do. And he said something about like a sweep. Oh, I think he's going to try a sweep or something. So I'm going to, I'm going to roll one through a bit quick. And that's precisely what he did. Bowled him. He did exactly what he <laughs> set out to do. The bloke's gone, and it was just like, you're watching it and going, it, it was like, there was no surprise. I just sat there and remember, I remember it well. I just re wish I could remember the batsman's name. <laughs> um, but I remember the moment quite well. I'm just thinking, yep, that's Warney. He was, yeah, a magician, he's been referred to. An absolute uh, magician, a master of the craft, as I said. Folks, if you come here to watch an aeroplane, well you're seeing an aeroplane, you're hearing a, an old fellow rabbiting on, I hope I hope that's okay, it's a, it's a bit of a video with a difference, it is a beautiful part of the world folks, let me take you outside, give you something to look at while I ramble on, uh, it's, it's a gorgeous part of the world, lake entrance Victoria, look at it, this is such a beautiful aeroplane, not the best weather in the world at the moment, live weather, but um, yeah, anyway, I'll give you something to, something to look at, I'll do a few manoeuvres here folks, fly remotely it's always going to be a challenge but yeah oh that era that sort of I guess he sort of arrived on the scene it was early 90s right because 93 was sort of the ball of the century that ball I think it's old Trafford his first ball of the of his ashes spell that year 93 to Mike Gatting a leg break that's been referred to, and will always be referred to, as the uh, the ball of the century. Absolutely incredible, and you can find it on the on the tube, folks. And what find the clip, find the version of it where you see Gatting's reaction. Like in the first sort of cut, they 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 cut straight to Warney, so you don't get to fully appreciate Gatting's reaction. But he was absolutely bamboozled. He couldn't believe it. And um, it's like a stump cam that'll show you what Gatting's expression was. Extraordinary uh, delivery. And, uh, yeah. It, yeah. Just come back to every time he had the ball, you felt like something was going to happen. He's like, you know when, for, the, for those of you that love basketball, you know when, when, they, th when they got Jordan the ball towards the end of the game, it's in a, you know... Yeah, towards the end and something's required and and Jordan gets the ball. You just you just felt like anything could happen, that something special was gonna happen, because it often did. And that was what it was like for um for when you were watching watching Warren. It was just every over was a little a little story, like he just worked the batsman over mentally as well. You know, he had a plan, it seemed like he had a plan for every batsman, every over, every ball. And uh, it, was just, it was just remarkable to watch. I'd love when he'd sort of bowl a delivery that would, you know, just, just about get the outside edge of the bat, just miss it or something. Or he'd, or he'd make an appeal and the appeal would be denied, but he knew he was getting there. He knew he was just one ball away from, from getting the batsman out and he'd just stand there, you know, 
put his put his hand on his chin, sort of give his chin a bit of a stroke, and just let's you know glare at the batsman. Be like, I got you, pal. I got you. You're on borrowed time. It was just fantastic to watch. Anyway, folks, this this is my um, my tribute to the great man, the Sheikah Tweak, the Spin King, the man we knew as uh, we knew as Warney. Condolences to his uh, to his family and to all of those that were uh, were close to him. Um, he'll be remembered for a lot of things, a lot of things that. Um, his his stats will uh, oh, they'll never be beaten. You'll never find a leg spinner that'll that'll get better numbers than him. And I don't think we're going to see his his ilk in Australian cricket again. You know, a bloke that loved the game, loved Victoria. He was a Victorian by birth and a, and a Victorian by heart. You know, as a Queenslander, I always forgave him though. He was always welcome to come north of the border and ply his trade. <laughs> you know, rip through the packies or the proms or especially the Kiwis. Um, he was always welcome at the Gabba. He did pretty well at the Gabba, as I recall as well. Um, but you know, he loved, he loved a beer, he loved a pie, loved a smoke, loved a durry. Uh, I hear he, he, liked, uh, he liked the white powder as well, but he wouldn't be alone in that. There's quite a few um, Got a few uh, sporting identities that uh, are into that caper as well. He loved the women. Uh, he, he was with. Uh, he managed to uh, managed to nab Liz Hurley there, didn't he? Hey, and got a lot of respect, I think, from the Australian male public as a result. You know, he would take Pfeiffer, come off the field, have a durry, have a can, and then go and shag bloody Liz Hurley. I mean, that's a life well lived, folks, isn't it? Ah, anyway, folks, I might um, I might look for a place to land here. Hey, I don't know where the field is. Uh, I suspect it's over there. <laughs> Would I be correct? Does that look like an airfield? It does. There we go. We might um, we might head back there. I think they've great lakes. Uh, and wrap this video up. So if you come looking for flight simulation content, folks, I I can only apologise. This was just uh, my 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 little way of paying tribute to uh, to someone who uh, I really enjoyed watching um, and he played a huge role such an influential role in in sort of moving Australian cricket from where it was in the 80s it wasn't in a great place to, to where it got in the 90s and then into the noughties and we're still doing alright but uh, yeah and he, and he continued to have such a role outside of his, of his playing days as well you know, gave a lot back to the game. You hear stories, and I'm sure we're going to hear more over coming days of uh, the interactions that he had with fans and stuff. You know, um, yeah, a true, a true character, a true great of the game. Shane Keith Warren, R.I.P. Sir. We're going to land here on uh, was it runway eight, runway six? <laughs> I don't know. Flying has been secondary <laughs> to this video today, folks. We'll try and do a, a reasonable job of it, though. It's a fantastic aeroplane. Really enjoy flying it. Worth picking up if you're into your vintage birds. Here we go. Oh, one of my worst landings. A nice little bounce as well. Folks, thanks for your company on another another flight. It's been a flight with a difference, a video with a difference. Feel free to uh, you know add uh, add your reflections in the comments, folks, on worn cricket, life, death, whatever, folks. 
Thanks for your company, and uh, we'll see you next time.